The following is brought to you by the Starfleet Podcast Network, SPN, The Spin. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Beyond Trek Podcast. I'm your host, Dag. In the booth with me, I have my amazing co-host, Renzo, and special guest, Arthur. We are here today to discuss whether or not, I wanted to say it was actually, you know, Darth Vader getting assimilated by the Borg, but in discussing it, my co-host was like, it's like whether or not he could get assimilated by the Borg. So that's a good guessing ground here. This whole episode was spawned and thought by one errant Twitter thread that ran off the deep end with Arthur about two days ago, and now we're just going to be like, hey, let's just throw random Star Trek events into other franchises and see how it hashes out. So today, Darth Vader, Borg, place your bets, because we're boldly going to a galaxy far, far away. Red alert. Okay. Arthur, you're the guest. Without any discussion beforehand, yes or no, do you... Notable. Th- we haven't talked about this amongst each other at all, so we don't know each other's positions on this. Right, right. So the question on the deck is... Mm-hmm. Do you think Darth Vader could be assimilated by the Borg such that the Borg prevail? Or so vice my versa, an- somehow? So here's my answer as a lawyer. It depends. But could Darth Vader be absorbed by the Borg? Yes. The likelihood of that happening is low so long as it's not wave after wave after wave of Borg. But if it's him, like, versus three drones, nah, he's fine. He's a, He has a force. He won't be absorbed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll expand it to the full collective because that's really the thought here is, you know, could, could like, in my head, it's really more of, like, a measure of wills. Could the collective dominate Darth Vader with the power of the force? And we're, I want to discuss that as well. But, you know, mm. I think we'll find a more refined uh, thing going on here. Renzo? I think it's uh, unquestionable that Darth Vader would be assimilated by the Borg, given enough drones, uh, because his main weapons are twofold. The Force itself, and then a plasma sword. Woo-woo-woo. The lightsaber, sure. The woo-woo-woo from the lightsaber is only going to last so long before the shields adapt to it, so he's not going to be slicing them and dicing them. He's going to be pushing them back, throwing them, but we know that they get tired after using the Force for so long. It exhausts the user. He's going to get tired, and the Borg don't tire, and they keep coming. Eventually, someone's going to lay a hand on him, and his suit will become the vessel for his assimilation. Now, as to whether they could dominate him, I think that's a much less interesting question. I don't (laughs) think the Borg would get access to the Force. I think they would just absorb him as a regular drone. (sighs) He would just be a drone for them. They wouldn't get the Force out of him. Why? I'm because midichlorians, me, because midichlorians are organelle-sized inside of the cell, so they are smaller than cells, whereas the nanites that they use to assimilate things are roughly cell-sized, so they're smaller. So the, or, the midichlorians themselves won't be assimilated, and I don't know how spirituality transfers to the collective. Mm. That's my take. Man, it reminds me of the Pa Wraith cult that Wei Yun led in a mirror universe somewhere. Now I'm just thinking about Darth Tenebris and him trying to find a machine way of using math to outdo the Force. Yeah, Mm. I was also trying to find, like, anywhere in Legends where somebody created, like, here's a Force serum. You take this serum and suddenly you've got Force powers for a couple hours. I couldn't find shit on that, right? Like, apparently there were attempts to create, like certain serums or something, but none of them ever worked. So I don't think it's simply a matter of having midichlorians gives you access to control the force. There's something more there. Against that, I did see a epic uh, superpower beatdown where Batman stumbled upon Darth Vader's medical lab and found some blood samples and gave himself the force with by injecting himself with Anakin's DNA. So there is a counterpoint there, Renzo. Like, it's canon and non-canon is sources, so. But that feels like a, that feels like an Elseworlds kind of deal right there. Yeah. But and that's I will, where I will we are, though, this, right? Right, but I will say this, though. There are, you're right that you can't give people the force. 
but there are tons of plants and animals that take it away. And I feel like if an animal innately has the ability just to take away the force as part of their living, because that's where Thrawn, uh, part of Thrawn's uh, yeah, he campaign the was, nurse, yeah. Yeah. then there, there probably is an animal that's just not important to anyone that just gives people the force. Like, if you're in my field, you have access to the force. It magnifies your midichlorian sensitivity? Yeah. So, I mean, imagine... I'd like yeah. to think that if there was one of those, the Emperor would have surrounded himself with that. Because oh, yeah. if it well, magnified a latent force user, it would absolutely be hell for a, a really good force user. So, mm -hmm. I did look into this too, Arthur, because I was also thinking, like, so there's definitely fields that cancel out the force. There must be fields that enhance it, right? So the mm -hmm. Isalamiri and the Vorskners, neither one of them, like, turn off the force. What they create is a... This is from the Wikipedia. They create a field of force neutrality. So nobody's force powers works unless it's a neutral force power. Mm -hmm. Whereas any user is either light or dark aligned. So it's just like... It just repels the abilities that have a polarity to them okay That's a good way i'm, to put it. It I'm, I'm polarity. just gonna i just gonna add that i can't wait for thrawn to have e salamry in ahsoka season two and ahsoka's like they don't affect me because i'm neutral <laughs> well know, i don't think ahsoka's i am no the, man is a good answer for that i don't think ahsoka's i don't think there if there's a ahsoka season two is gonna be really interesting because if you're gonna leave her in a different galaxy you need to leave her there she can't keep coming back and so I think she's probably going to stay there. So Ahsoka Sin 2 won't deal with anything of Thrawn. I think it's going to do with the, the father, the daughter, the son, and maybe even uh, the mother. But I don't think I don't think she's coming back to the Star Wars main galaxy. I think she's going to stay out there in wild space. Well, we know we're getting a second season. We don't know yeah. whether it's including the Ahsoka character or not. But considering they're not changing the name, I suspect we're going to be following her story. So I don't know. And the rest of us desperately want to see more Thrawn, so... I want to see more Andor. The Andor show is the best thing Star Wars has made in a while. Okay. Yeah. So back you on don't the agree, subject. Arthur? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is not my show, so I'm going to be really polite. I'm not going to say anything. No, we'll, we'll hash this out later. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah we just we want, kind of want to kind of segue it off the subject, but let's get back Wait, to... Wait, so what's the, your take? What's your take, Dad? What's my take? Yeah. Oh, um, my take depends on the galaxy in which this interaction occurs. If it happens in the Star Trek galaxy, I think Vader is as good as a drone. But if it happens in the Star Wars galaxy, I think, and I'll we can talk, we can hash this out later in discussion. I think Vader will become ridiculously powerful. Even if he gets assimilated. Especially so, if he gets assimilated. So you think if he gets assimilated, his will to dominate is so strong that he essentially becomes the king of the Borg? Yeah, we can get there when we get there. But that's oh. pretty much it, yeah. Okay. I, I get where you're coming from with it. The only place where I think that the setting for this matters is if the Borg collective has a sufficient number of beings in it that already have midichlorians. If, they, if, if because they've assimilated, like, half the Empire or something, and now they reach Darth Vader, and now Darth Vader's when they get assimilated, then yes, I think the, the Collective would get access to the Force. But if it's not that version of the Collective, it's just, like, a Delta Quadrant Star Trek <laughs> kind of built-up Collective, then no, I don't think they'd get it, because they'd have one being with it, and that's not enough to get access to it. Okay. As far as like the tenacity of Darth Vader to dominate the will of others, he's not Sauron. He's just a scared little guy. His name is Anakin, and he's sad and scared. I don't think he's going to dominate shit out of the Collective in any situation. Imagine being his therapist, though. Imagine being the therapist to Darth Vader. Like those are will be some intense. You know what? Stuff. I'll bet you the Queen would have fun with it. <laughs> Remember how I... she manipulated the shit out of Data in First Contact? I'll bet you yeah. she play the same games with Vader. Could you imagine she goes, I can give you back arms and legs, organic, with midichlorians, baby. So, I, yeah, I wrote a I wrote a short story about that where Q sent the Enterprise into uh, into the, the Star Wars galaxy, and it was right after 
the Death Star had been destroyed, and uh, the Enterprise picks up uh, Darth Vader's TIE fighter on long-range sensors, rendezvous with it, and um, there's a scene where Vader is in the observation lounge alone, and Q flashes onto the observation lounge doing the whole Force ghost look, and snaps and gives Anakin his whole body back, and just describing how that felt for Anakin before he snaps again and takes it all away. Um, yeah, there's definitely some wonder to be pulled from that scenario. But we're not that's talking about Q. We're talking about the Borg. That, that's such so a cute thing to do. Yeah. That's such a cute thing to do. Just like, it's... why? Because it's fun. <laughs> so there was one, something I wanted to bring up, right? So I wanted to bring up the potential, the possibility that the Borg would be unaffected by force powers because none of them have midichlorians, assuming that they're Star Trek Borg, right? And there's a... Uh, Warhammer video game that I think depicts something like this very well. So there's a race called the Tau in Warhammer 40k. They are not touched by the warp and by chaos. That's just kind of their shtick, right? In the entire campaign when you play as them, chaos entities, or in any any one of the campaigns when you play as any faction, you will hear chaos voices in the background of missions and such, yelling at you, trying to corrupt you, trying to manipulate you, whatever, right? But when you're playing as the Tau, because they have been untouched evolutionarily by chaos, all you hear is like a slight buzzing sound and the characters will comment on that like what's that buzzing sound somebody's got to retune our audio what's that noise kind of shit because they don't actually get touched by the effect of chaos same thing i think would happen here with the borg and force powers he's not going to be reading their minds he's not going to be force tricking them he's not going to be shooting lightning not that vader can shoot lightning but mm -hmm. I think that they'd essentially be immune because they have no midichlorians to receive or be manipulated by said force. But I think I think you're right in as much as they would not be affected by like the Jedi mind trick. But I do think they will be affected by force push or force pull. That right there's a physical thing because we see yeah. it happen to objects. Yeah, that's but fair. But things that things that like get into your mind, you know, like in Clone Wars and stuff. Yeah, when they when they're like, mm, there's nothing there, or it's the exact opposite. You get everything, and that's just too much information for a brain to have. Because at that point, you're tapping into. Because I don't think I think if you're tapping into a drone, either you get nothing, or you get the entire collective, and that may be too much information for even a a a a, 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 a Lord of the Sith to handle all that at one time. That's fair. Yeah, no, that makes sense to me, right? Like, if you tap into one drone, you get the entire hive. Fuck you. Enjoy the and migraine. It's, yeah, it's like, god damn it. Oh, mm. I don't like to curse. swear. It's cool. Oh, okay. Good. We're yeah. allowed. You're allowed. We're all about it. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, that's pretty good. When I wrote my short story, I I did tack into the idea that the Enterprise crew did not have midichlorians and therefore were extremely susceptible to force powers because they had no defense. Mm. And okay. I basically had crush because Vader's doing the, the, the mind trick to Picard all up down at left and right. Riker relieves him of command. He goes to uh, sick bay where Beverly runs an analysis and discovers that the mind trick biologically speaking, is just making Picard's GABA-A receptors more accommodating. And so she gives him an inoculation that constricts his GABA-A flow, like artificially, so that it can't be force widened and broadened for that. And then the next time Picard meets Vader, Vader's trying to force trick him, and he's like, you'll find that our crew has been inoculated against your will, Lord Vader. And it's pretty cool. How long does it last? Is it is it a permanent? Now I'm kind of curious. Is it a permanent fix, or is it one of the things where if you don't take it every day, hour, or period of time, it wanes? Their interaction with him did not necessitate that fear, that concept. It, it, it ended before we we got to that point where I was thinking about it. Okay. And I mean, that's a good so, thought. I think you have to have inoculations regularly. Yeah, probably. Unless so I let's... could like do brain surgery and put some kind of foreign construct around your GABA A receptors and make them physically unable to dilate. So let's see where we can agree common ground here, right? Okay. Do we think that the Borg, a drone, it would eventually, no matter how many arms get sliced off first, but would eventually adapt entirely to a lightsaber? <sighs> This, may, this must make for riveting inter listening while we think deep thoughts. I know, right? No, I mean, okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Um, it's plasma, and phasers are also plasma. 
And so I think that even, uh, I mean, a sustained contact with the lightsaber would require more energy. So it depends on how much energy a particular drone can draw from to be able to power that shield. Um, but a glancing blow would be just like absorbing a phaser bolt. I'm going to say no, and here's the reason why. Kyber crystals. Okay. They're alive. And because they are alive, I, just to be the anti-party, I'm going to say no because the Kyber crystal is alive and it's never seeing at the same frequency. So it, it naturally is just bouncing up and down, left and right. Therefore, it makes it difficult for the Borg to adapt. Because they adapt to the they, once they they need to see something happen a few times they go, oh I know exactly what this one specific thing is, but because the Kyber crystal is alive, it's bouncing up and down the spectrum all day long. It's never exactly the same. So then, how come the shields that were in the Phantom Menace could block lightsabers without much trouble? Maybe it was in Attack of the Clones. No, it was in Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace, Menace at the end, the ray shields. Yeah, the ray shields. Ray shields, just more power. <laughs> I well, mean, and that the goes Borg back to what are... I said. Yeah. Um. So I'm, I'm thinking because I'm I'm thinking ray shields. Well, in ray shields they actually they actually don't they actually don't block. If I remember correctly, are you talking about the very beginning when they're on the? I'm talking about the red ones that shut towards the like end battle they're and fighting Phantom Darth Maul. Maul. Yeah, Darth Maul. They're fighting Darth Maul. So I think my thing is this: we never actually see a lightsaber make contact with it. We know the organic components, the people, they can't make it through. And I since think they I remember make... seeing one of them tap against it and it just bounces off. They also couldn't get through uh, droidicas. Yeah, the droidica shields yeah. too. Droidica shields. And and again, I'm not, I'm well, with droidica shields, it, for them, it's not about the frequency, it's the speed. And since lightsabers move so fast because they're constantly emitting that energy, for them, it's about the motion because Remember in Clone Wars, they say, roll the grenades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember. It, so, I... It's a Dune I, reference. Yes. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. The slow shields. It's a, it's a reference to Dune. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it's... But I, I, I think that if the Kyber Crystal is alive and continues to bounce frequency, I don't think that the Borg would adapt. But if the lightsaber gives a consistent... So many hurts, like it always does at this point, then yes. I think four or five hits at that point they've adapted Renzo? Oh I, I think that irrespective of it being alive or not if it's like a range of a spectrum of frequencies that it may bounce around in the Borg would just go oh it's in this range to this range block the entire thing and after that it's just going to be a matter of like using it like a blunt bat against the Borg he'd be swinging mm. at them and it would hit their shields no matter where he's hitting the first dozen or maybe the first five or three drones are going to be Ginsu'd, but after that, it's going to be like using a pool noodle against them. That would be hilarious. Just hitting the board with a pool noodle. Yeah, no, just boonk, bonk. Um, <laughs> no, that's that's a good way to align there. It's like, how long, how much time does Vader have with a lightsaber before the Borg are like, yeah, that's not going to work anymore, bro? Ah. <sighs> You know, we and depending on your depiction of the Borg, some of them are going to be shooting energy weapons at him too, right? Because in yep. games, in some episodes, they kind of have range weapons that they'll shoot from their little Borgy arms. Mm -hmm. It's not super consistent, but they right. might be shooting shit at him as well from multiple well, sides because the Borg don't tend to go one by one. The Borg also have access to um, aerosolized nanoprobe technology as well. They can yeah. just drop a bomb in the air, and then the air that he breathes, and then you have the sudden like He's got the filter. It, you have the uh, <laughs> the filter but, would get but, assimilated though. Yeah, but with the filter, with the filter, filter out nanoprobes, like nanoprobes, because those are so small. I'd say Vader They're... would have a second or two, maybe if it did. I would guarantee that it would filter out the nanoprobes because nanoprobes are still like cell sized, whereas even like your N95 thing that you were wearing around could filter things much smaller than that. Okay. And I'll bet you his thing is better. But Dag is absolutely right. They'll assimilate his mask instead. That is a, no, well, is it, well, I guess that brings up this question. Would the board consider the technology that keeps Vader alive worthy of assimilation? Because they are picky. No. I, I they, think, I, I think it comes down to whether or not the board consider Vader that much of a threat. 
Because first of all, he's pushing people around with telekinesis, and the Borg are familiar with that, but they can't do it. So that might be assimilation worthy, and they're going to want to get through his suit to get to him. Okay. Well, if if if, if in in that yes, but the only reason why I was curious if they go for the technology because they because of their quest for perfection, they tend to avoid things that they feel don't add to that perfection. Sure. And sure. if and if his suit wouldn't add to that perfection, notwithstanding him being in it. Then they may go. It's not worth it to us. Like we're better than this. This is a step down, not a step up. I get it, but remember, like in First Contact, right? Uh, Ensign Hawk, right? He was wearing his spacesuit, or whatever. Hawk himself adds nothing to the collective. His spacesuit adds nothing to the collective, but they want him as a drone, so they right. assimilated him. And you could see technology on the outside of the suit as well, so they assimilated the suit too, because it was to achieve a goal, and their goal was to take over the Enterprise. Same thing here. If their goal is to assimilate Vader, they'll take the suit with him. I don't think his suit is as primitive as the Kazon, but they probably don't really benefit from the tech in it anyways. Borg medical tech is crazy. Yeah. Because okay. like they, they give it android skin. <laughs> so so I just want to say what the, the score is. The lightsaber is now a baseball bat. Um, the his suit cannot protect him forever, especially if the Borg have some kind of aerosolized or airborne uh, assimilation technology in play, which we know they have access to. Oh, so now we're we're Anakin losing this fight so far in this conversation. Here's an angle that I just thought of that I hadn't thought of before. You guys remember in the Prodigy episode where Zero taps into the collective? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's non-corporeal, but he is telepathic, right? They. So he makes it true. They make connection with the collective and become assimilated as a result of the, just the telepathic connection. There was no physical component to their assimilation, right? If Vader tries to read the mind of a drone or is simply surrounded by this forceful presence of the collective, is that enough to touch his mind and begin a, a psychological assimilation too? Hmm. I would, Can't, I, because he'd have to close himself off from the force otherwise, right? Well, see, I think Sith, you actually have to deep. I was gonna say it's a Sith tactic to try and get into the mind of your enemy, so I think Vader would try that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he'd come out of it. I'm, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that he tries to, and it hurts, and he stops. But you don't have to close yourself off the from the force entirely to just not read the minds of the people around you whereas zero's telepathy is like always on zero always That's knows fair. it's very much like uh Luoxana. Luoxana always knows <laughs> I, I i i miss Lux, Luxana troy that woman that woman was gonna get her some picard um <laughs> um i think I think it, what, well, one, you are right. Like that's what the Sith do. Like they use a force to try to erode away the mind as well as the body, but also they do that to each other as part of their training. So I think if Vader reached out to the, with the force to the to the collective, and if the millions and mi- upon millions of drones all just decide to go Anakin, and they're like, we're we're gonna work our way through. I think so long as the number of them is not too numerous, he can handle it. The question really, for me, a lot of these questions kind of come down to, again, I think Vader versus one drone, he's going to win every time. The question is, how many drones are the collective going to sit? How many voices are going to be talking to him, trying to get into his head if he reaches out to the Force? Because if it's just like five or ten, he can handle that. But imagine a quadrant's worth of drones all just concentrating on you just like we know what you, we know what you did in Temple Anakin <laughs> think we of know. those younglings but no <laughs> so, so let's Ouch. think of it this way right when the Empire destroyed Alderaan the estimates for the population of Alderaan are around 2 billion people right mm-hmm. uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi was halfway across the galaxy uh, and felt it from there felt the death <gasps> felt the loss it crushed him for a moment right because he was open to the force right right Two billion. The Borg Collective has been described as having trillions upon trillions upon trillions of drones, right? Even if they're not physically in the same place, they're always connected to each other, right? Mm -hmm. If you try and read the mind of one, like we were saying before, you're probably touching them all. So I think that even, like, the chance of him doing the Sith 
mind uh, fuckery, for lack of a better word, in the middle of a fight might be a death sentence for him if he touches the drone, the collective as a whole. Because remember, from Picard, time. well, not even, remember from what we learned from Picard, the Borg collective is addictive and it is euphoric and it gives you pleasure to make you want to stay immediately. So if he gets in there at all and he starts being flooded with that, like, endorphin cascade that the poor guy hasn't felt in 30 years, he may never want to leave. But I think he, I think, I see, I, I don't, for as intoxicating as the collective is, I don't think he would stay because his self-loathing is so high that the fact that he would feel happiness would force him out. So I think that Vader, in my head, Vader would reach out, get the collective, oh, it's a whole lot of y'all, and they would go like, come on, come on home, come on. Look, it's a warm day. They got, you got your legs. We got Padme. We got Padme. We got so many Padme. We got Padme from this planet, Padme from that planet. And his self-loathing would kick in so strong that he would tap into like a dark well of the force and pull himself out. Mm -hmm. If they wanted to keep him there, they really should have him be self-loathing. That's how you would keep him. But um, if you give him a happy place, I think he would reject it because of, you know, he's killed a lot of kids. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to add into that. Um, in the Star Trek or the Star Wars encyclopedia that came out in like 99 or around then, they described Vader's suit as having been engineered by Palpate Palp Palpatine, mm -hmm. Papalteen, Palpatine, Ovaltine, whatever, um, <laughs> as, as the suit constantly gives him pain. Yep. The suit is designed to hurt, to be uncomfortable, mm -hmm. to be you know override his bio biological features to be like <laughs> nope pain because that's the way of the sith so i feel mm -hmm. like unless the borg either overcame that or i think yeah just if the borg could overcome that aspect of the suit vader might be lost but i think that in con in conjunction with what arthur said and the suit just being programmed so that vader vader can never feel good um that that he's gonna he's gonna rip himself away from that. Okay, I, I agree with you guys. I, but we're neutering him. That... He he can't get into the mind of his enemy. He can't use his his lightsaber as effectively as he means to, and that takes away two of the really big advantages that a Sith has. I do think we should probably nail down to Arthur's question though, right? Like, what is, what is the scenario in which he's in, right? Because in my head, I'm like, Vader's on a planet. It's a Borg planet. Good fucking luck, right? That's essentially what I was thinking. He would be happy to do that with a planet full of, say, like, rebels, or he'd, he'd, be, he'd be happy having a great day if that was Coruscant, right? Just go kill anybody you want. Go have fun, right? But suddenly with Borg, it's a bit scarier for him, uh, given the numbers. So what, what is, what's the scenario you guys were envisioning for this? Him versus a cube. Okay. 60,000. So about a, yeah, 60,000. I think with 60,000. Ooh. Ooh. Well, let's down, nail down what scenario you were envisioning first, Arthur. Like, what. Vader so it, versus it, how many and where? So for me, it, it, it was going to be in space. And I was thinking maybe um, not a full cube, but I was thinking maybe. Uh, a sphere has leached onto like a star destroyer and so you have assimilation happening so he understands that there are some things here and he's a last man standing and so he needs to either blow up blow the ship up or kill everyone um but i i kind of want to stay away from the entire collective because that's to me that's a little bit unfair that those those are odds that are just so tilted in one one favor but at the same time, it shouldn't be Darth Vader versus one drone. Like, that's nothing for him. No. Like, just in the gong, you know? Yeah. Uh, no, we all agree there. So I'm willing to say that a fair one would be, like, a Borg cube versus Vader, or the population thereof, right? Mm -hmm. I think that that's a pretty fair scenario because we know that there are tens of thousands of Borg cubes. That's, like, their main thing. They've got hundreds of thousands of them, potentially. Mm -hmm. And they have huge populations on them between, like, 60,000 to 140,000 drones on a cube. 
it's a lot of it's a lot of drones right so <laughs> i think i think we need to lear, get the question narrowed down to you know given even odds how does the situation play because we already said that like darth vader versus one or two or five maybe ten drones that's not fair vader's gonna dominate right so we right. we should give the same consideration the other way Darth Vader on the Borg homeworld surrounded by vinculums? That's not fair. Darth <laughs> Vader next to a queen? Mm, Darth Vader's probably going to slice her. Um, but, you know, with a legion of drones, a cube, uh, no queen, or we can do scenarios with or without, um, given everything the Borg have as of the end of Voyager... And then Darth Vader at his most powerful, which in my opinion is right before A New Hope. Because once he learned he has a kid, he just, you know, he gets soft. <laughs> yeah. Well, well so, so, you know, I, I was watching, I, I'll be very quick. I was watching this TikTok video and it was Anakin and it was Darth Vader and Luke. They were talking to each other. It's the end of um, Return of Jedi right before they go meet the Emperor. And they, they 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 drop in Force Obi Wan because Vader's like explaining why he's not bad. He's like, I could have killed you, I didn't. Uh, 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 you tried to kill Han. He's a drug smuggler. Who would not want to kill a drug? Like Vader's making all these points, and Luke goes, you, know, you got some, you got some points. And then Obi Wan, as a Force ghost, goes, yeah, except he killed a whole bunch of children. And Vader's like, whoa, 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 why did I bring that up, man? Why did I bring that up? Um. um <laughs> Uh, um, I, I think something that might be a little bit more interesting is Vader is on the cube, but the cube has been through some stuff. So instead of it being the full 60, how about around 20? So the Borg are like, we have to repair the ship and we have to do with this guy. Vader thinks, oh, they're injured. I can take advantage of them. And he comes to the realization like, oh, they are still a force to be reckoned with. That way everyone has, a, there's a little bit of element of surprise on both ends but no one's overpowering each other too much. How does that sound? So we've got a Borg cube damaged by, say, some crazy ion storm. Say it's about 60% damaged or destroyed, and then the remaining 20,000 drones that are functional on it are there. A errant TIE advanced flies by, sees it, decides to land inside of it and just, like, shack up to see what he can do there. That's yeah. our scenario? I think that might be interesting. Yeah, that's fair for me. The Borg take a mild interest because it's technology and they're damaged, so they could probably just use the the, the materials alone mm -hmm. if they can't use the tech. Mm -hmm. And so, so, to be fair, if they get a reading on what hyperspace drives work and how fast <sighs> they go, the collective is going to be real fucking interested real quick. Did the TIE advance like, hey. have hyperdrive? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're just like, hey, why don't you just pile on in? Come on in. Land your ship right here, right underneath this scanner. That just need a need some, some quick scans real quick. We stole yeah. this 3D printer from from uh, the other <laughs> ship. <laughs> so one thing to keep in mind, though, is that we know that Borg ships themselves have defenses. We see that in the Prodigy episode. We see that in video games. We see that in Voyager episodes, too. Like, they will have things that animate and will try and trap things inside of their ship, right? So say Vader takes a wrong step and off the wrong or onto a catwalk or something, the catwalk itself will rotate and trap him there, slow him down, that kind of stuff. Even without drones being involved, the ship mm -hmm. itself is going to be fucking with him. Mm-hmm. And every inside of every Borg cube is not OSHA approved at all. I mean, no, sir. Well, but neither is the inside of any you know <laughs> Imperial tech. They don't have handrails on shit. <laughs> you can just fall. You get stabbed by your son, and you look at him, and then you just Ooh. fall off the side. Nobody cares about handrails. That's that's part of one of my favorite parts of Mandalorian. The the last episode when the the dro the little droid flies up, and he's just like, "I didn't. I retired from the war." And there's like, there's no handrails. He's just like, "Why? I, I'm gonna fall. I'm gonna die. Why? Why are they built this way?" I'm just like, man. Y'all don't have OSHA. <laughs> so, Vader is walking around this cube, trying to investigate it, see what it's about, its weird technology, or what have you. And the Borg do detect that hyperdrive 
signal and they analyze the spectrum or whatever and realize that they could actually use this technology maybe to help them get to another Borg space where they can, you know, cure the cube. So they come after his TIE advance. He happens to be in the way of their advance and has to encounter, you know, a squadron of drones who approach him from the same perspective as like Picard calling out to Lily, like, don't be a threat. They're not going to hurt you. Vader doesn't think that way. So he ignites the lightsaber and takes out three or four of them before what happens. That's when their shields start kicking in. They've adapted to the lightsaber. Ting, ting. Yeah, and more drones start showing up too. I think because he's that's in between when... them and the, the, the technology they want. Mm-hmm. That's when he uses a giant force push and and for all of the vagueness, he is still Anakin deep down inside. I would not be surprised if he starts modifying his lightsaber every now and then trying to get the most out or if he examines maybe a board drone to see if there's something there that might be able to help his lightsaber deal with it. I don't think he's going to get anything from trying to examine a Borg drone, because we've seen scanners in Star Wars. They are far more primitive than a tricorder. Like, a tricorder doesn't tell you much about a Borg drone. So, uh, early on, uh, remember in Q Who, in the initial contact with the Borg, they read the ship as having no life signs on it at all, right? Mm. Same issue here. I don't think any scanners he might have, including the ones built into his face mask, are going to give him much of anything particularly useful. He's going to think that these are, like, defective organisms. Because we already know that, like, the clones had biotech in their heads. And we know that, like, people like Lobot had, like, neural interfaces. Lobot. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, he's going to liken these to that kind of interaction. Defective Um, puppets. Well, and and he's going to know that a signal can dispel that. And here's where he tries to reach out with the force. Uh, maybe. Maybe, or maybe, I don't know, if he has any kind of, you know, emittive technology that can emit a signal that might dispel the collective. Could Can these drones, and this is just more of a foundational question, can these drones, they're cut off from the rest of the collective, so it's just them, right? No. So okay. we said the sh- we said that the cube was like sixty percent damaged or destroyed, right? Right. According to TNG, a Borg cube is still fully functional up until seventy eight percent of it is destroyed. Ah, uh, thank no, you, asking, Shelby. Yeah. No, I'm asking. <laughs> no, I'm asking. Are these drones in t- are, to the, the other the collective, very, the wider collective, to the, to the, to the wider collective, or are they just by themselves? Communications wise, not so much so like how so the twenty thousand here definitely with each other. Yeah, right. that part we can all agree. I don't know if I don't know if we decided on whether they'd be connected to the rest of the collective. Because say, that might be the more interesting thing. Because if they're part of the rest of the collective, that processing power well, is going to outdo Vader all day long. We know that the collective cuts off cubes for weird reasons, including catastrophic damagey things. Mm-hmm. So depending usually, on how usually this usually not physical damage though, it's usually from things like a pathogen or a computer pathogens virus and stuff, right? Something mm-hmm. that might spread through the collective. Damage to a ship from like an ion storm isn't going to spread. It's just a ship mm-hmm. that's crippled. Well, but as soon as the as soon as the collective, the larger collective, is informed about this hyperdrive thing, uh, they're probably going to reevaluate their cost risk assessment. Mm-hmm. It's worth it. We'll we'll burn through a few cubes. To, to, to be able the to go tech... anywhere in the galaxy in a few hours? Yes. Yeah, yeah we'll... this, just the speed advantage of hyperdrive over everything in Star Trek, including the Borg transwarp conduits, means that they would dedicate anything to get the thing. Yeah. Because once they, I mean, imagine if the Borg could just pop up anywhere. Just, hello. Welcome to the And without family. having to make, t- like, a conduit there first, nothing. No, yeah. no need to maintain conduits, no building oh, yeah. on a star surface to power your conduit. No, no, we're just going to appear at Earth. But um All right. Guess what, guys, you're all part of the family now. I feel compelled to just remind everybody that we've we've seriously nerfed the Borg in order to make this situation work. So that says something about the scenario. <laughs> So, a couple points, though. We know that Borg cubes have at least one vinculum, and they have several of the central plexuses, mm-hmm. which yep. are going to be, like, essentially networking hubs for the Collective. 
So those are probably going to be places that Vader on this cube is definitely going to want to avoid because it'll be stronger signal of the collective there. But even if it's just them. the local 20k, that's the risk though. Do you get close to it and risk them touching your mind? Or um, or, he, or does he or does he just practice? Uh, no, mock doom is when he's when you're attacking someone. Or does he just fortify his mind and go like, that's where all the voices are. I'll go there purposely. And then if he goes there, would he use a force to try to cripple the Borg from the inside out? I don't think he'd need to use the force on a vinculum. I think he could just use a blaster. He doesn't carry any. His lightsaber, mm -hmm. then. They've already adapted to it by this They've point. Adapted. Are they protecting their tech from it? They always have. I've never yeah. seen that. We've seen them shoot phasers at things before, and it just does nothing. Yeah. At, at, at drones. No, at no, their tech, even too. At their tech. Um, I hmm. forget which episode it was. I think it's when Picard got kidnapped. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the the bites to make this that make them stop and scratch for a second, right? Yeah. And Remember then, how the, the first one that they shot, it was one person's phaser, the second one took two, and the last one took, like, all four of them shooting at it for longer, and then it finally pops. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, good call. I just want to throw that into the into the box. I need to watch Next Generation. That's why I'm learning. I need to watch. So, I I definitely am curious to know though. Like, Vader is kind of like a bull in a china shop. Like he he's not subtle about his like offensive planning, right? Not at all. <laughs> right. If he's gonna try and make his way towards a vincu towards the vinculum or to one of the central processing cores, he's gonna be laying waste to things. He's just gonna go in a straight fucking line towards it, right? That's when I think the collective comes in force. That's when you have 8,000 drones standing between him and them, or him and it, and uh, it gets a little bit more complicated. I think that's where he'd get assimilated. A hand is going to get to him. Now, can Vader use the force to rip Borg uh, technology out of the host organism? I think his it, it comes... Uh -huh. Yes, yes, but can he do it? Absolutely. I don't know what his level of precision is. Could he rip? Could he rip an eyepiece out? Absolutely. But could he rip like an individual nanoprobe out? I've never seen. I'm not worried that about him point. destroying a nanoprobe. We already, we already. I'm already accepted the notion that he's just going to rage hell through the cube to find this vinculum. If that's his ultimate goal, is detecting where the signals are coming from and going to where the force says go to. Um, but on his way, he encounters these eight thousand drones, and does he just put his hands together? and spread them and the drones just pfft, because we've seen the force used in such a way that droids get pulled apart screw by screw by the thousands in one motion mace windu yeah. could do it and mace treaded the line between the dark and the light yes but I... there was a lightning effect when mace windu did it right and we know that vader cannot do anything lightning that's what happens when you don't vader... have any fingers yeah I think Vader's going to pull a Darth Maul, pull, pull up a floor panel, and just push through people. Like, I'm not going to deal with okay. you directly. He's just going to pull out. Because if I'm him, I'm pulling up a floor panel, and I'm just going to – I can't use my lightsaber. The Borg tend not to be the best against blunt objects. Pick up a floor panel, and I'm just going to start wailing on you all with the Force or put them in my hands. I can't use a lightsaber. Stick you with the pole. Just keep pushing them away, pushing them away. I we mean, do know that bullets can penetrate Borg shields. True. But true. we also know that Vader gets tired, and we know that the Force is tiring. If he's going to be trying to use the Force to push through every clump of fucking drones that come at him over and over for the thousands of meters it takes to get closer to a vinculum, Bro's going to get tired and he's going to mess up. A hand will grab him from the floor because it was clinging onto the side of the catwalk or something. But to a certain extent, that's okay for Vader. I'll just I'll I'll throw away that leg. I'll throw away that you want you want that foot? Enjoy that foot. But you he can only toss baby. away so but, many limbs. <laughs> he also doesn't know how the assimilation works though, right? Like he doesn't know that once he's touched with by nanoprobes, he's fucked. He's got no idea how these guys work. Yep. True. True. Alright. I'm gonna I'm gonna lean into where I was going at the beginning. Uh Vader gets assimilated. Just Somewhere eventually down this line of thought, Vader gets assimilated. Um, the nanoprobes overwhelm his respirator. They get in. He starts breathing them. For about five seconds, he's going, wow, I can breathe a whole lot better before he's like, oh, the voices. What's up with the voices? Um, and then the pain stops. And, and then, then he goes, 
And he goes, Padme? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> they... <laughs> and, then the, and then the Borg project a picture of him with Padme and Luke and Leia, and they're on the beach, and sand! No! <laughs> but um, here's, here's where I say if Vader gets assimilated, and I'm happy to argue this because it's pretty thin anyway. Um, if Vader gets assimilated, he becomes incredibly powerful because he no longer has to use the force to j to guess the intention of his foe. He knows it through and through, and they know him through and through, and through him they have access to the force. And so then it becomes a mental contest of domination. Can Vader subsume enough of those voices to have an army that does what he does. We know the Emperor did that. The Emperor was the one who was guiding the hand at at Endor. His his mental control was helping that. That was fight. battle meditation though. Meditation. So yeah. that is a question. Could Vader use battle meditation if he allow allows or just doesn't know it, but if he gets assimilated by the boar because we know in Voyager that there are some Borg that when they're regenerating, they go to a place where they're away from the collective. If you he... Matrix Zero? Make, yeah, Matrix Zero. Yeah. That concept plus the Force, could he... Could they use battle meditation such that you probably would never see him again because he always has to stay in that form? But could battle meditation in the most basic sense, could that control the Borg if he's with the Borg? So, expanding on that question, right? You remember in the Voyager episode where Bolana, Tuvok, and Janeway all actually got assimilated but yep. retained their memories, their personalities because of mm -hmm. some technology that the Doctor came up with, right? Mm -hmm. The same thing happens in a couple video games of Star Trek. There's Star Trek Borg where a Bajani crewmate has some sort of like mind trance thing and locks away his consciousness when he gets assimilated and then it reasserts after the assimilation and he controls his body again. Like little things like this have popped up a few times in Trek in Beta Canon 2. Um, do we think that it's possible then that the physical body of the Vader gets assimilated but not his mind and he can somehow reassert control eventually? I that's think where he I could. was going with it. Yeah, that's that's a good question. My only reason to think no is because the, the collective is trillions or quadrillions of voices, right? And mm -hmm. one of the things that Anakin has always seek, like sought after was acceptance, appreciation, admiration, adulation from people, right? By joining the collective, he gets all those things. But I, again, that again, that sort of brings back to a question I was asking before: Are these drones that he's dealing with? Are they a part of the great, like at, at a core level, they are all part of the collective? But are they in communication with the rest of the collective, or if he is assembling, is he only hearing these other twenty thousand voices, or is he hearing the trillions upon trillions? Because if it's the trillions it's upon a matter trillions, of time, like even right. if it's just the twenty thousand right now. Give those Borg a few hours, and they'll get that cube back up to 100%, and the rest of the Collective would inevitably be in contact again. Well, we did establish that um, if the Borg detect, like, a virus in the Collective, that they would shut that cube off from the Collective. Is Borg's, is, 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 is Vader's dominance detected similarly that these he, they're losing control of drones to this other force and does that merit cutting off that cube versus the desire to have this hyperdrive tech i'm not even sure he's stronger than than zero right like zero is a non-corporeal organism or living being right and they're incredibly strong in consciousness like they are just a consciousness that's all they are and yet the collective was able to overpower that almost effortlessly in a cube that was damaged and cut off from the rest of the collective. Do we have a lot of information about Medusan capability? Because no. I think we're only going by zero here, because the only other episode is is there in truth no The beauty. TOS one, yeah. Because well, we know they, that they, they, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say that we know biologically, like Dr. Flox, his people are hard to assimilate both physically and mentally, they're just difficult for the Borg. Like, it takes the Borg some time to get to where they want to get to. Well, he was also um, their first time being assimilated, right? Like, yeah. give them another 20 Denobi ones, and I'll bet you they'll get quicker at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then you got Species 8472, which, God damn it, I want to assimilate them so bad. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I think 
I think if Vader is able to find the, because I think Vader would be sensed as a virus. The question is, the Borg want the hyperdrive technology. That right there is, I think honestly, I think the Borg would burn through half their cubes to get that one thing. Like for them, it is is definitely worth it. The question is, if you're looking at the greater collective, how much are they willing to lose dealing with Vader as a virus to get that ship? That was a really cool close up on you, by the way. Just asking oh, the question. Very well timed. Mm, that was nice. <laughs> well, I'll put it this way. We think of the Federation as being an important polity. It's got 150 member races. It controls a thousand light years of space. Like it is big, significant, right? Mm -hmm. The most the Borg have ever dedicated to doing anything to them is one cube at a time, right? They don't think of well, the we, Federation as being all that important. We got That's movies they to can make, man. Travel as fast as us. Right. Also, we got movies to make, okay? We, I get we, it. We can't blow our load in one shot. <laughs> the so, Borg are aware of us, and that's why in pre-production, they're like, okay, uh, Rick Berman, you, you can't send more than one cube. We're just going to kill everybody in your universe, and that's not going to make a good movie. Well, hey. so in the books, though, in the books, though, in the Destiny timeline, they do end up having, like, a full, yeah. full-scale full invasion of the, of the Federation, thousands upon thousands of cubes across Nausicaa, all of it. all the things. Yeah, it's bad. But, right, like, I would say, though, that for something like a hyperdrive that lets them travel intergalactically or intergalactically as well pretty quickly okay they would be willing to throw billions of cube or billions of lives away to try and get to it i think i can i think i can extrapolate a reasonable outcome okay um and i just want to tack in that yeah i think the borg are that petty because the queen was like hey look sixty-six thousand people on this sphere but i can't hear two of them kaboom um yeah so yeah she don't care um, so here's what happens. Here's what happens. Uh, um, Anakin has been assimilated. And through this assimilation of this surviving 20,000 minds that he becomes connected to, his will imposes over just these 20,000 rubes. Um, and it, what, what he doesn't... He, what can he do? It's a, it's a ship. He doesn't really know the technology. He doesn't know the area. He, he understands that they want his tech to be able to travel everywhere, and he knows that he wants to protect the Empire, so he's got to leave the tech, you know, out of, out of those hands. The Collective cuts them off because they detect this, this weird thing happening on Cube 0650, and uh, they quarantine that region of space, and for a very temporary moment of time, Vader is trying to figure out what the hell to do. In doing so, he learns how the cube functions, how it repairs itself, those kinds of things. Um, he becomes aware that he's the only force user in this area. But he also has that battle meditation thing. Let's just give it to him, see what happens. Um, but the collective is like, all right, we're going to launch a tactical assault, send 17 cubes there. And there is a glorious fight where Vader's mind able to coordinate the battle movements of these 20,000 surviving drones and repairing the ship and, and fighting the others, you know, they'll take out two or three cubes before the other 14 are like, yeah, no. <laughs> um, and then it's a matter of like the rest of that collective cutting in and taking out his voice and those kinds of things. That's where my brain went with that. Yours. So my brain, my brain went a similar route but made some wild divergent choices. Though. Love it. Um, I think that it's not the Borg who cut Vader off him and his 20,000 drones. It's Vader. He cuts him and his 20,000 drones off from the collective okay. because he doesn't want other voices. He doesn't want them to hear other voices. You hear my voice and my voice alone. Um, I think he gets them organized. I think he gets them to repairing the ship. Um, he is very much aware after, you know, being immersed in them for a while that there are more cubes out there. And I think what he probably would end up doing is assimilating people from Star Wars. He would probably start assimilating planets to prepare for the Borg. The real question is, how far can he go before the Emperor does that? Because if we're going to have Vader in here, you can't just have, you can't, for me at least, I can't have Vader versus a, a, a busted ass drone, a busted ass cube, and then the rest of the collective. If the drones get the collective, Vader gets the Empire. Um, and I think that Vader severs himself, and I think the Borg are like, 
we have to get that cube back. It has hyperdrive technology. We need that. I don't care what it takes. Um, I do think he prepares people. And the real question is, how, how does Palpatine play? Does he try? Is is Vader fighting a war two fronts? Is it one front? But I think that Vader is the one who cuts him and his 20,000 drones off. It's not the other way around. Okay, I like that. And, uh, but I mean, we know that, that Palpatine has access to planet killing technology, so the cubes at that point become nothing. This is so that, okay. I thank you because if they're spread about, that makes it difficult. It's Death Stars work great for planets, but if you got 15 cubes and they're all doing weird stuff, I was thinking no the Exegol often. fleet. The Exegol fleet is an absurd bullshit from the sequel trilogy. Ignore that shit. <laughs> Um, forget that. That was such a dumb plot line. No. Guys, we can't go up without a radio. How do we get off world? I will, I will say, and I hope you all invite me back. But I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to speak my truth, my peace. Is, the, is, is Rise of Skywalker a flawed movie? Absolutely. But do I like that flawed movie? Absolutely. Absolutely. And Palpatine going, yeah, man. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll watch The Last Jedi over and over again before I rewatch Rise of Why Skywalker. Why submit yourself to that kind of torture? Because I prefer oh. it to the other two sequel movies. <laughs> this is not, Let this the is past not a Star die. Wars podcast. Kill it if you have to. This is not a Star Wars. I just want to so reiterate to our Star to. Wars fans have... out there. We don't actually, like, really diss star wars though yeah we do i don't have to worry about you all not inviting me i won't invite myself oh uh, wow no we want you back no, man. you're cool yeah uh um, so here's my take though because i didn't get to say mine yeah do it oh sorry yeah no mine's actually pretty straightforward anakin vader is an arrogant prick he thinks he can dominate over a collective of trillions He's never met something that he couldn't brute force his way into. Even if he manages to maintain his independence after being assimilated through some kind of Sith mind hole trickery, he's going to try and fight the collective on its terms and he's going to lose. And he's going to lose real hard. So his body will have been assimilated. His mind survives. He then tries to fight the collective once his consciousness reasserts. And then he's going to get his mind assimilated through the same means that Zero was. I don't think there's any question that he's going to be able to control the drones immediately around him, but as soon as the full collective looks at him, it'll be that Eye of Sauron moment where they have to shudder and hide kind of thing. He's just screwed. Yeah. Man, imagine. But for those 15 minutes, it'll be glorious, just oh. like Data. For those now 15 I'm... minutes, I was, in, I was in charge, guys. I was in charge. Now I'm just imagining. Have you guys seen the Animatrix? There's yes. there's a there's one of the snippets in the Animatrix is how the the robots learned to mess with us and it's really grotesque for a kid to watch but as an adult watching it again it's not so bad but they're like poking at your brain and your nerves to figure out what makes you smile what makes you cry instead it's Borg Tech doing it to Anakin to figure out how to elicit the Force through him because you can't synthesize midichlorians I'm just gonna put that rule down. Yeah, <laughs> that, that the midichlorians are are but created by did life in the in the last Skywalker. He didn't synthesize midichlorians. He willed the Force to and create kept, and he life. Just kept cloning. He, kept he just cloning. kept cloning. Yeah, he just kept cloning. But I will say this though: I do think that if Anakin Vader is essentially is assimilated by the board, it it would, in the words of uh, George Lucas. It rhymes, it doesn't repeat. And the reason why I think it would be sort of really interesting for that, because think about his entire life, right? He was born into slavery. And then he was taken out of, out of slavery to being a Jedi. And although that is not slavery, he had he was shackled by this prophecy of you're oh, gonna yeah. get chosen. And then after that, you're literally shackled inside of a metal suit. And then after that, you don't even get control of your body. And depending on because we know the poor like you said, they are petty. They are petty as hell. I can see the Borg keeping his body alive and manipulating his mind that he is essentially a force gun. We will use him whenever we need to use him. Otherwise, we just put him, we put, we put him in the, we put him somewhere because they did the same thing to Seven Lines parents. They kept them around so they needed them. And I could see the Borg going, we're going to repair, we're going to repair you well enough that if we need someone to do force push for whatever reason, bring out, bring a, uh, Star Wars Galaxy, Anakin, I don't know what his number would be. Bring like, one what, of one. Bring one of one of one. Come on out. 
boom. Now go back and go back and go back in your alpha. We'll we'll call you when we need you. I agree. They, I agree. They would definitely just make them a regular drone doing regular drone things for regular drone days. Except every now and then they may need them. I don't think the Borg would find the force to be all that interesting because they can only use it on one drone. They can't expand it if we agree that they can't reproduce midichlorians. So it's just one drone, one kind of neat trick, nothing we can't do with technology other ways, right? Mm -hmm. So that's cool. The real goal for them is that hyperdrive on that TIE Advanced. Yeah. And once that's, they that, have that's... that, it's over for everybody else. It is useful to point out that Vader was a slave his whole life. The only yeah. thing he did as a free person was kill the Emperor. And we all know the Emperor remained dead, and it was happily ever after, because instead of segueing into a, The Force Awakens, we all went to the Thrawn saga that Timothy Zahn wrote in the early 90s, which is amazing. Um, or not. It, it really just depends. Um, the original EU was so much better than the J.J. Uh, Abrams stuff. What is Fuck interesting Jar Jar Abrams. is that the Borg could just get access to Kiranide and then have telekinesis, because McCoy gave it to Kirk in Plato's Chup Stepchildren. And we never talked about it again. Here, has some well, artificial well, that's telekinesis. The, that's, the, that's the legacy of Star Trek. So many things that are really interesting. We just never talk about them again. <laughs> just imagine. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think just... Lower Decks needs to do an episode of that and just be like, yeah, you guys remember all this stuff? No, never heard of it. Yep. Yeah, well, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I was just, there, it's... man. <laughs> telekinesis is just that disinteresting to the board. They I've know what Kira is. They just don't care. I've got Khan's blood. You can't touch me. <laughs> I've got I've got that math formula that Scotty worked out for transwarp beaming. I can be anywhere. I can move anything. And then Q shows up and says, "Welcome to the collective, brother." I mean, um, imagine imagine if the imagine if the Borg had that. Like, we'll just beam in everywhere at once, just like hello, simulation time. Hello, simulation time. I don't even think I'd send a cube. I would just send nanites and be like, "Go do the job." Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, just imagine that, like a cloud of nanites appearing in your planet, like in the atmosphere of your planet, and it just one, two, three, four. Those four planets are going to be assimilated. Just give them a week. Goodbye. Yeah. I've always, <sighs> I've always been. So let me ask you this question because this is my first time meeting you while in, well, in person, such as it is. How do you think the Borg started? If if that's okay to have this conversation, it was Ooh, an Lord. accident. Yeah, I'm on board. It was some sort of like medical treatment or some kind of like assisted survival technology that just went crazy i think that the point of that whole like we work to better ourselves we seek perfection is kind of mm -hmm. the hint that they weren't supposed to be like conquerors or anything it was just supposed to be like a life support system gone rogue seeking protection is the ultimate perversion of um uh ai learning you just keep going you just keep running through the scenario until you do it right and then you do it faster and then you get the most points and then and then and then and then and then and then, mm -hmm. and then the system becomes self-aware and starts making its own objectives based on the fun the fundamental rule of do the best you can which then becomes be perfect well look at viger right like viger's objective was learn all that is learnable right or know all that is knowable right mm -hmm. there were definitely a million different fan theories about how viger founded the borg or viger was found by the borg one or the other, it's unclear who thinks what, but that there's some connection between what Viger came back at, Voyager came back as Viger, and the Borg homeworld. Fair. There's definitely that moment in the motion picture where we see like a machine planet with lightning streaks around it and everything, uh, and that's where Viger was converted. Cool. Maybe that was the Borg. But maybe the mentality that they're using or following was somehow influenced by Viger itself. I think that that's something that we could probably explore and would be very interesting. We we know that the Borg predate V'ger. Yes, we do. Because they were assimilating planets in like the 14th but time century. time travel. V'ger fell down through a wormhole. Oh, okay. Time travel. Okay. Okay. And this is it's it got there quicker, but it's taking longer to come home. Because it it's, it took the long way home instead of the short route. <laughs> It, it found the um, I, Barzan I, wormhole and and went there, and then they just couldn't figure out how that thing worked, so they just sent it back the lot, the scenic route. Yeah, because uh, I, I I tend to agree with you all that it was a medical procedure that went awry, and I think I read some fanfic where the queen is actually the reason why she even exists. Because I know some people disagree with the concept of a poor queen, is that she was patient zero, like her conscience is part of every nanite because. 
she was a patient they were trying to save. Mm. And over the countless eons of her living, she has totally forgotten her purpose. Like, no, you you were the patient. But it was we will fix you. We will, we will, we will give you a perfect body. We'll give you perfection. And it's like, Oh, well we can do this one a little bit here. And it spread and spread and spread. So surely they became the board. Mm. Fun times. Well, I think the ultimate answer to our question is that Anakin's going to resist his heart out, but at the end of all things, he will be a Borg puppet at the end of, at the end of the, the day. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it. The only way he survives is that it's a very weakened board, um, and there are so many controls or factors that you have to sort of bend towards his favor in order for him to come out on top. Yeah, like remember how they grabbed Picard in the first place, right? They beamed a couple Borg onto the Enterprise D bridge to distract the security people. Worf runs up, gets thrown left. Riker moves towards the other one, and then out of nowhere, another Borg pops up in instantly behind Picard with his hand already in position to stun him, and then beams out with him like a half second later, right? The Force should probably help, like Anakin, prevent something like that. But they're <clears throat> gonna keep trying. Things with transporters are not things Star Wars has a defense against. So yep. shields, if, but that's about it. We don't even know if they would work against them. They're that's different true. kinds of shields. That's true. Yeah, because I think I think you're right. I think the force would give him knowledge because, like Thrawn uses uh, the Chiss use force sensitive girls to help navigate. Yeah. So, I do think that he would the force would tell him like, hey, step to your left, step to your right. But that that only really works well if it's one Borg at a time. The moment it's like five Borg coming in, you know, 15, 100 Borg. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. Or just as bad, instead of trying to beam to him, beam him somewhere else. Oh, yeah. We'll bring you bring you with us. No, you know what? We can't beat you. Because let's say let's say the Borg go, we can't win. That's not a problem. Scoop him up. Scoop the tide defender up and go home. We'll take, we'll do this when we get home. This is a house problem. <laughs> this, is a not, this is not an outside door problem. <laughs> we will take care of this inside of our home. You all don't need to see what happens. Just right know, on the other hand, it. I can definitely imagine a scene in this whole scenario where Vader finds like the Borg maturation chambers with all the little Borg baby drones inside, just pulls out his lifetime and goes, just killing them all again. Except that they have shields too and it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but he'd try. But you'd see him try. I've done, wait a minute. I've done this before, goddammit. Mm. <laughs> the Borg just put him in a virtual world after they assimilate him. It's him in the Jedi Council chamber with that one Jedi going, Master Anakin, what do we do? Just over and over, looped at on repeat. Game okay. over, Anakin Skywalker. I, I know we're wrapping up, but I do want to ask one question of you all. because What you said this was really interesting to me. Once he's assimilated, we know that part of what the Borg do is they put you in, the, in your own little mind palace essentially, to make you easier to control. What mind palace would they put Anakin in to make him easier to control? You know that scene in Attack of the Clones where he and Padme are off on, like, those weird tick bugs running around on the fields of Naboo or whatever? Mm -hmm. Think a cottage there with two little babies in a crib somewhere, and that's just where he hangs out. No, no Jedi coming looking for him. No intergalactic pressures. No civil war. Nothing. Just him and Padme and their two babies forever in cribs, kind of thing. And that's way better than me. I was just gonna jump him in a pod racer on the Bunta Eve and just have him go at it infinite laps. Hmm. That okay. might be very effective, though. <laughs> it's like making a computer count to, to last calculate the last digit of pi. It can't do anything else while it's stuck in the circuit. Mm. Okay. How about you, Arthur? What would you put him in? Um, I would have him if I would have him recreate Episode Three, except for he doesn't force choke Padme and he doesn't kill the Emperor, so he he can redeem, he can feel good about him. He he gets happiness without the baggage. So by mm. taking away those two bad choices, <laughs> he can then embrace the happiness of being with Padme and the two children. So I do still end up with the children. But I allow him to kill the Emperor to get rid of that self loathing I allow him to become a Jedi Master. Because I genuinely do think that had he not killed the Emperor, that would have been his trials and he would have been made a Master. Hmm. Well, there you have it, folks. 
straight from us. Anakin Skywalker gets to be a master if he lets Mace Windu kill the Emperor. Otherwise, he is uh, Borg, uh, Borg Pudu. Uh, that'll be it for our first episode of Cross Trekking, where we take a an element from Star Trek and drop it somewhere else in the franchises of, of the multiverse. Uh, we hope you like the show. We hope that uh, you'll join us again. And, uh, of course, as always, thank you for going boldly with Beyond Trek Podcast. And if you don't agree with us, let us know in the comments. Happy to argue. Sure. The Last Jedi sucks. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> it was the best of them. Hey, everybody. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to our Patreon and Anchor supporters, to S. Tam and Nora Hickson. Thank you so much for being a part of Beyond Trek Podcast. We are Beyond Trek Podcast. Lower your inhibitions and surrender your years. We will add inspirational and hilarious Trek content to your day. Your attention will adapt to subscribe to us. Resistance is futile.